So it's always useful when you're creating a system and designing a, a more complex system where there's a number of functions going on. The best way to do it is to build little bits at a time and then test those out and make sure they're functioning and then, you know, add in the next feature and the next feature. You know, don't always try and build it all at the start and expect it to work because it's very hard to fault find and very hard to identify maybe what part of your code isn't working as well or what could be improved. So in this kind of series of videos, we're going to look at a couple of, you know, features or points to look out for a common pitfall, pit, pitfalls that might um, arise when you're doing this particular program. So we'll look at some of them kind of separation. But again, keep that idea in mind that you want to design something, test it, see does it work, see you're happy with it, and then move on to the to the next part, really. Uh, also, when you've you know got to the stage where you're fairly happy with your system, you need to do a lot of different tests for um, the system itself, just to see if there's something else that's cropping up or some other functionality that you thought you might have included, but you haven't really have spotted it just yet. So by doing a good few tests, um, you know, working at different temperatures, raising it up very steadily, dropping it rapidly, um, you know, changing the dial, changing the modes at all different times, you know, doing a rigorous test will help identify um, some other features that you may have to add in that you haven't just add, thought about at the start. Let's look at the, the analog dial here, the analog input. Uh, it's just maybe a common pitfall or a common note to take that you may not have considered before, okay? So we know the dial is gonna allow us to change the scent temperature, this target temperature. Um, so as we twist that and then press the activate button, it will change our set temperature, right? Now, at the moment we're saying, okay, we want our set or our target temperature to be 24.5 degrees Celsius. So that means if the temperature in the room is greater than that, we're gonna open the window. So at the moment we're just imagining the window is closed. Now our temperature has settled, so we're at 22.2 degrees in the room. You know, it's not rapidly increasing or rapidly decreasing. The two temperatures have settled, so we're nice and kind of stable at the moment. So we're below, as I said, we're below the set temperature, so we're assuming the window is closed. Right, now let's just watch. If I bring the set temperature down, so down to 14 degrees, Notice how we're now hotter in the room and how it hasn't opened just yet. I had to wait for the next no sorry, it hasn't even it hasn't um it hasn't opened the window. Okay? Because the reason for that is basically what's happening here is there's not I was I'm always looking for a change of around one degrees before I'm making the change. But, you know, fundamentally, we still need to compare, is this greater or less than our target temperature, okay? So because there's not a change of one degrees or one degree or whatever you need it to be, that's just what I've said in the code, I've said it's one degree, it's not activating my, um, my window or my motor. But fundamentally, I'm still much greater than what, uh, you know, the target temperature is. So... It's just to be aware that once you activate this, you should do a check basically on the set temperature to make sure that if you're above or below it, it's, it's going to activate. Another point just to maybe look at is the dial. So we know we can bring the set temperature all the way up to 30 and then we could bring it all the way down to zero degrees. Okay, if I operate that. So, you know, when you look at that, zero to 30 degrees depend on the environment you know maybe it's a very very cold greenhouse and you may want to watch it getting greater than less than zero degrees but if you even think about just temperature control in a room in general you might want that scale to be maybe between say 15 degrees and maybe 35 degrees maybe go a little bit higher instead of going between zero and 30 you might not want to go that low so again that could be something that you might want to look at in the code about how you scale the analog feature, that you develop a formula that will take maybe 10 degrees as your minimum and 35 degrees as your max, rather than between, say, zero and 30. So that could be something interesting to look at. Likewise to that, it can be very hard to, say, set a temperature um, 
accurately like let's say i wanted to get that to 10 it's hard to kind of know when i'm pushing the push button see if i went a little bit too much there and then if i bring it back up again you know i'm trying to get to 10 there but it can be hard to adjust with this dial so maybe you want to do something like three dill, dill switches and basically if you press that one up it will set it at a temperature of five if you press number two up it'll set it at a temperature of 10 so if you set number three up and the other two are down it'll set it at 15 or whatever you know it doesn't have to be an analog input to control it you could think about the switches because you know maybe if you only have a certain amount of regions that you want to look at maybe you only want to control the set temperature at 15 20 and 30 degrees and you want it to be exactly at that you don't want it to be 21.2 or anything like that and you know that using this dial can be a little bit difficult to do that well then maybe use the, the dill switches so again that's up to you how you find using the controls um of what you like and what you don't like to add them in and then you can change the code up and and you know change it to suit so another functionality that you might want to look at or again a common pitfall is not actually setting how many degrees it's going to take to fully open or fully close the window and um, so right let's just say to fully open this window is 180 degrees all right so that's what i've set my code to i put it into basic mode so basically if i just bring this down basically if the temperature in the room is greater than whatever my set temperature is it's going to open my window fully that's the basic mode it's just going to open it fully so we're going to change that around you can see my window there it's opening 180 fully around because my current temperature was greater than my set temperature okay that's fair enough so we're assuming that window is fully opened now at this stage but something that we might not have thought of well if i actually press this button again current temperature is greater than my set temperature and it's just going to open at 180 degrees again okay but yet i'm trying to say well my window is fully open so i shouldn't be turning on my motor to turn it around again so that could be another common pitfall that you want to watch out for that whatever it is um you know you need to store a variable or store some memory location that's going to monitor right we have this already and we talked about that we're going to monitor how much we've opened the window and then again if you're saying well if we're already you should be monitoring that to say if we're already at 180 degrees even if we are you know um greater than we shouldn't be trying to push it in push the motor any further than 180 degrees so there's another comparison there to make then just uh, to really emphasize the use of visual indicators within the system just to let you know that parts of your code are working or aren't working obviously it's you know it's great that we have the lcd display so we can just see what value our temperature sensor is at and we can see it updating and um, but it's also useful you know we can see that um, I use this orange LED just to say that we've gone into that function and ran that bit of code. You know, sometimes it's always useful just to have those indicators so that we know we're actually going into these areas of codes and it's actually operating this different um, functions for us. So, uh, you know, I'm a big fan of using visual indicators. Again, you know, we press um, when we're moving forward, we can see the green LEDs on. If we're moving backwards, we'll use the red LED. Uh, you know, just the motor board over here. Uh, allows us those indicators as well uh, to show when the stepper motor is being activated so you can see it there and um, the LEDs coming on so it's a very common thing to use in industry just different indicators to let us know that some of the functions are, are working or that the codes going into it and then again it can help us fault find because if I was pushing the button and you know the green LED was coming on but the motor wasn't moving I could identify that it could be some of the wiring or just some of the code for the motor in particular but i know that it's actually calling that function and actually going into that bit of code so always very good to have um visual indicators there for fault finding um especially but also just for the user then to see uh, that different functionalities is happening so it's, you know it's a very common thing to use and something that you should include within your your solution okay and again you could use buzzers you could use other things as well but leds are, are very Another useful common problem that might uh, pop up is something to do with the motor and in terms of the readings okay so again taking into consideration what we're trying to do here well with my system anyway is if we're doing a bit of proportional control so that if the temperature is greater 
than the set temperature. And if we get a change of one degree, it's going to turn the motor 20 degrees in rotation. So every one degree we're going to increase above the set temperature, we're going to keep increasing in segments of 20 degrees of rotation from the motor. Okay. Now, what's important is, is that we only move the motor every time we take a reading um, from the temperature sensor. Okay, that we only do that comparison once. So when we get the flashing light, we get the new temperature, we compare it to the old temperature, and then we do the rotation if it has increased, if the temperature has increased by one, de one degree Celsius. What you don't want it to do is, you know, like especially based on like what I'm doing at the moment here is I'm taking a reading every 10 seconds, I think it is. So taking a reading every 10 seconds. What you don't want, because the CPU is going to run through your code very quickly, and especially if you were taking a reading maybe every 20 or 30 seconds, you don't want it to constantly keep moving the motor. And what I'll try and show you this now, just demonstrating it. If I just reset my system, okay, um, what I've done is I've made a tweak just to kind of go to, to this old way of um, showing you this problem. So what you should see is my set temperature is at 20 degrees. So I should get a greater, so it's 23 degrees, so it's much greater than it. And look, my motor keeps turning keeps turning because yeah I'm still greater than them two and I'm still greater than I was still greater than that and now when it takes another day, another reading it's now stopped because there isn't a one degree difference between those two it's now settled but you notice from the motor that it kept opening it during that period uh, before it was taking the new reading and you don't want that to happen so again if I try and heat up my motor just by putting my hand on it again We'll see when it takes a new reading. So we see there is a one degree difference between them. That is greater than that. So that will keep turning around until we take another sample. And you see the way it stops. So you'll want to try and alleviate that in your code that you only want the motor, if it is going to move, it's only going to move once and then we're going to block it from moving until the the temperature reading is taken again. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. You've kind of seen the seen it happen in there. Um, it's just it's, it's to do with your sampling rate. Because imagine, like in real life, you're probably going to sample the temperature maybe every, you know, minute, and you definitely don't want it within that minute to just keep opening and keep opening because you'll have the the window open, so there'll be no proportional control there at all. So what you've got to do is you've got to think about that once you have moved the motor, that you can turn basically an indicator on or a bit of memory on inside your code that's going to stay on and it'll basically, you know, that condition will block the motor from moving forward again. And then once you take the sample, you can then turn that um, condition or that indicator off so that it's able to move the motor again because, you know, there could be another increase of one degree and it will need to move it again. So it's just important to think about that, that you know, during our sample time, there could, you know, you don't want the motor to just keep keep increasing. So hopefully that makes sense and you've kind of seen it there. Depending on how you do your code, it could be a problem for you. Um, it is a common problem that pops up.